Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another unboxing and review. And today we are going to look at what's inside of this package, uh, which I received from Amazon earlier this morning. And today is Sunday, October 3rd, 2021. All right, so this is going to be a full, full unboxing. So let's take a look at this and open it up. Um, so this is underneath my document camera, and I'm not sure if there's enough headspace for me to actually open this up properly, but we'll see. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to open this up the best that I could. Just fold this a little. Alright, let's open this. Alright, so... Let's move this box out of the way. All right, I am excited. Um, so today we are going to unbox and review the new Star Wars Mission Fleet, the Razor Crest. If recommended for ages four and up. Okay, so just to clarify <laughs> for some people, because I know someone's going to say this in the comments, right? So this is not, this is not, this is not the Hasbro HasLab crowdfunded Razorcrest. I repeat, this is not the crowdfunded HasLab Razorcrest. Um, this is from the Mission Fleet toy line. Um, which you can find at like stores like Target and Walmart. Um, they're recommended for kids ages four and up. This is not a premium high-end collectible. So I just want to clarify that because there's always some person that'll say like, oh, I thought this was going to be the HasLab ship. I'm saying it right now. It's not the HasLab ship. This is the kitty toy. And just to clarify also, there's always going to be that bitter old man who's going to say, oh, this thing can't hold a candle next to the the HasLab Razor Crest that I pre-ordered. Of course, it can't hold a candle to that. The HasLab Razor Crest is $350. What you're looking at here is a $41 toy for kids. <laughs> so I, I don't want to see anyone in the comments complaining like how this thing is crap next to the, the like the HasLab Razor Crest. It's like it's like it's like no shit. This is a kid's toy. It can't hang with that that thing. So I'm going to review this on the merits of what this is. This is a kitty toy. Um, it's from the Mission Fleet line, which I adore. I think the Mission Fleet stuff is awesome. And I'm very stoked to have this in hand. And just to reiterate, this is for ages 4 and up. So if there's any of those like bitter old men that are watching this, they're going to complain about how the five, like <laughs> the $400 toy is a lot better. It's like... Of course it is. It's like a $350 toy. This is like a $40, you know, kitty thing. All right, so let's get started. Um, so this is a pretty large box for a Mission Fleet vehicle. Um, I'm estimating it's probably about the same size as uh, the Mission Fleet Millennium Falcon. So if you have the Mission Fleet Millennium Falcon, this box, I believe, is about the same size, or if not, very comparable to that. Uh, the box art is beautiful. And I can't stress enough how awesome this box is. For one, I like I like the Mission Fleet stuff a lot. I think the box art is always incredible. The package design is really cool. You know, they don't give you just a plain rectangle box. You know, one of the corners here is kind of like curved off with the Star Wars logo on a slant. The illustration here is superb. Um, they have some really talented artists working for Hasbro. And this this is a beautiful, beautiful illustration. 
you have a uh, you have Mando here and Grogu, a very kind of like cartoon inspired version of Grogu. And then you have the Razor Crest, and immediately you can tell this is not a hundred percent accurate to the show one, just because it has this giant rocket blaster on the top, and that's pretty much um, a toy accessory that comes with this vehicle. But yeah, this looks beautiful. Um, as you can see here, you're gonna get uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu packaged with this vehicle. And then here's the um, uh, the toy as it looks like on the back of the box. And the detail looks awesome. This looks great. And it's, what's even cool here, they even give you the, the dimensions of this vehicle. So this is gonna measure about 13 inches long and I believe 8.2 inches, I think that might be wide. So it's about 8.2 inches wide, 13 inches long. Um, if I remember correctly, I wanna see I, the, the HasLab crowdfunded Razor Crest is 30 inches long and 20 inches wide. So it's over twice the size of this. So this is to, uh, this isn't 100% scale accurate to these style of figures. Um, but I think, you know, for the price point, you know, this is kind of like the sweet spot. And this is a lot smaller than it should be for these guys. But I don't think that takes anything away from this vehicle. I think it looks really cool. So inside the contents, you're going to get the vehicle itself. As we see here, it comes with four projectiles, the rocket blaster. Um, it shows some of the play features, like you can open up the cockpit and you can put Grogu and Mandalorian in there. So it's a two-seater. And it's awesome because over here, it shows you the figures you're getting and um, the, all the cool blasters and rifles that come with the Mandalorian. So if you've purchased the Mandalorian before, um, whether in the, um, I think it was the speeder bike set or the recent released um, Blurg set, I think the only weapons you might have gotten was just the jet pack and maybe um, the pronged rifle, I think. I believe the these other weapons are weapons that we've gotten with other figures already. So yeah. Oh yeah, what's even nice about this too is that um, it lists the size and dimensions of the vehicle here. But right here, it lets you know that this is the one-to-one -one scale of the actual vehicle. So what we're looking at, this is the actual size of the vehicle itself. So you're looking at something that's 13 inches. So this is pretty big, um, especially for a mission fleet vehicle. Now it's nowhere near the size of the HasLab one. You, all right, you know, that one's like 30 inches long. That's like over twice the size of this. But I think for 40, you know, 40 bucks, this is a great deal. Okay, let's get this thing out of the box and get this review started. Really excited to open this. Alright, just give me a moment. I can't remember what side of the box I opened when I did the Millennium Falcon, so I'm just going to start on this side. So this is an imperfect rectangle, so there's a couple of different... Uh, tabs I have to open up. All right, there we go. Okay, let's get this thing out. sheet of paper uh, instructions All right, so this is what it looks like out of the box. Um, uh, all right, there's two pieces of documentation. We have this little sheet of paper, which is, I think all, it's like in a million different languages. I believe this is probably all the copyright information and maybe contact information. Uh, 
Um, uh, up next we have, uh, so here's the instruction manual. All right, let's give this a quick look first. Um, okay, so here's the body of the ship. It looks like we're gonna attach the cannons on the left and right side of the front. And then the rockets are attached to the roof. It looks like it's one piece. And it looks like it's going to attach to the top of the main body. Okay, so it comes with that, that rocket launcher. It's a double barrel rocket launcher. And according to this, uh, there's one, two, three, four. So it looks like there's four different peg holes on top of the ship. So you can place the rocket launcher either in the middle, um, on either side of the rocket uh, rockets on the left and right, or you could put it towards the tail end of the ship. Or if you want the, the ship to look more screen accurate, you could probably just keep it off altogether. Um, here's some options for Mando himself. You can either give him the cape, or you can give him the, the rocket pack. And I believe this is the figure that we got with the speeder bike, I think. And then here's more instructions. So it comes two of the um, projectiles you can put inside of the rocket blaster. And then here you press down to fire them out. Uh, likewise, in the front of the ship, you can attach two of the projectiles to the front here, press the buttons, and they'll shoot out. And in terms of some of the playability features, this is really cool. Um, so it has the door on the left side of the ship opens up and uh, <laughs> the left side door folds down so it kind of recreates that ramp that we've seen in the television show um uh, the left side of the ship this entire panel section folds down also so that allows you with accessibility to the inside of the ship um i think the haslab crowdfunded one has something similar like this also i think for that ship um i think you can remove the roof and i believe you can remove um the left side of the panel um, and just like on the show, the towards the back, the ramp could come down, which is awesome. And what is even cooler is if you have the speeder bike, it looks like the speeder bike could like actually fit inside of this. So that that's an extra plus. I'm not sure if the blurg will fit, um, but I do have I do have the blurg on hand, and we could try that out in a little bit. All right, another cool feature of the Razor Crest uh, for the interior is that they give him his weapons locker. So all those cool guns, you can actually store them inside, which is awesome. Very accurate to the show. Um, and over here, so here's Mando. He's in the pilot seat. And it looks like Grogu might have an additional kind of like, maybe like child seat he could sit in. And maybe it goes inside there. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and then here is how to detach the roof and the rockets. I guess that's if you want to access the top of the ship. Um, you know, if, I mean, keep in mind this this toy is for children. Children have much much smaller hands, especially if you're you know only four years old. So chances are, you know, they could detach the roof and their hands will probably fit in the top. Whereas my hands might be a little bit too big for that. Okay, let's take this out. All right, so um, over here we have the roof and the two rockets. All right, we'll look at this in a second. All right, on this side, all right, so what? if you do purchase this, just keep in mind um, all, all the different components I'm going through so you don't accidentally throw something away. So on this side, we have a, a cardboard baggie. Really, really cool. It's nice to see that Hasbro is being very um, environmentally conscious, and instead of giving us a plastic baggie, they're giving us a, a paper baggie. So I'm assuming this has the, the projectiles, the all the weapons for the armory, and maybe the rocket blaster. So don't throw this away. Hold on to this. On the right side of the tray, you'll notice this is kind of well hidden. So just keep an eye out for this because you don't want to accidentally throw this away. We have Baby Yoda here or Grogu. Um, this might be a figure we've gotten before. Um, I'll, I can examine that in a little bit. I'm surprised they didn't package him and Mando in the baggie because it seems like it'd be very easy for someone to just throw away the cardboard tray and forget about this guy. So yeah, remember to get this guy out. 
Likewise, you don't want to throw away Mando. You need him. So take him out. Uh, I'm kind of examining this figure, trying to decipher if it's different than the previous one. Don't know yet. Um, okay, so here's the meat and potatoes of the ship. We have the, the actual body of the craft. And let's get this out. Oh wow, this looks this looks fantastic. All right. So we have the body of the ship. We have the roof and the rockets. Uh, we have the documentation, the instruction manual here. Let's set that aside for a second. Yeah, let's just get everything laid out so um, we can examine all the individual components separately. And All right, so we have. Uh, all right, so here's the rocket blaster. All right, there's that. All right, we should have four projectile missiles one, two, three, four, two, three. Four. All right, you should have two cannons for the front. So we have one, two. All right, so this is kind of this is kind of cute. So uh, Grogu has his. So this is not the pram that he normally travels around in. Now, this is kind of like a weird. It's almost like a basket. I'm not sure if this was from the show or not. It might have been from the show. Um, but I don't remember him having it actually in the cockpit. So this is kind of like a basket for baby Grogu. I'll uh, we'll put this right here. We had the jetpack and a buttload of weapons. So I remember this uh, coming with one of the mission fleet uh, mandos. We have a stormtrooper blaster. Um, this looks like Boba Fett's blaster, I think. Uh, I think this is, this is a rifle, um, I want to say this might be the rifle they gave the IG-11 figure. I could be wrong though. Uh, we have a pistol. And then we have another pistol. All right, let me do a head count here, make sure I have all the weapons. All right, so I have that, I have that, I have that. One, two, three, one, two, three, three, six. All right, yeah, so there should be three, there should be six weapons altogether. All right, so also keep in mind, all right, as I've stated before, this is a kid's toy, all right? This Mission Fleet's aimed for the um, younger kids, ages four and up. And the price I paid for this, um, I purchased this through Amazon. I believe it was $41 and maybe 99 cents, I think. That's what I paid for it. So remember, this is not in the same league as the $350 HasLab Razor Crest. This is clearly aimed at younger children. It is not a premium collectible. Um, but just judging from what I'm seeing here, just because it's not a $350 toy, um, what you are getting here for $41, I think is a great deal. It's very impressive um, in terms of this, the detail and the sculpting and the thoughtfulness that went involved in making this. So 
I right now I haven't assembled it, but I can tell you right now, for me, I'm very impressed with uh, with what I'm seeing so far. The attention to detail is amazing. You know, all the panel work, all the details, you know, the, all the different doors and hatches that open. I think it's really, really cool. Um, and with that being said, let's take a close look at some of these accessories before we assemble it. So this is the roof of the ship, and we have the two rocket engines on both sides. As you can see, there's three different peg holes, one here, one here, and one here. So you could take the rocket blaster and affix it in different locations. Or if you want it to be more accurate to the show, you could just do away with the rocket blaster altogether. So one thing that's strikingly different between this version of the ship and the um, $350 ship is that the HasLab one, it has um, an escape pod, which I believe is on top of the ship right here. Um, what's curious is I don't remember them using the escape pod in the television show. And the Lego Razor Crest actually has the escape pod also too. So, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, this is really neat. The details are so fine. Um, so I'm not sure how they even how they even re recreate this. Like, uh, is Hasbro handed off like the digital files from like Lucasfilm, and do they work off of those digital files and modify them to make this toy, or does Hasbro have their own engineers and designers that just kind of eyeball it? You know, I'm I'm really I'm always just really interested in this design process. Um, especially with modern engineering um, with toys because, you know, back in the day, a lot of stuff was like sculpted by hand and, or maybe, you know, maybe later on, they maybe might have used programs like CAD or whatever, but um, something like this, it's so refined and so perfect and everything's so symmetrical. It, you know, there's without doubt that this was designed on a computer, but I'm just really curious, like how true is this to the actual... Um, you know, computer model that we see on the television show or the physical model that they even created. But just looking at this, the detail is astounding. I mean, just look at it. And what's even crazier is I just noticed just now, you flip it over, they went to the great lengths to even like detail the, the entire ceiling of the ship. I mean, you're not going to see this at all, but you know, they went ahead and detailed the ceiling. You know, there's additional panels and vents and buttons, all sorts of crazy stuff. And immediately, my, one of my first thoughts with this toy when I first unboxed it is that, all right, so if you're a customizer or if you're into like model kit building or kit bashing, oh man, you're going to have a field day with something like this. Like, all right, so the to this toy doesn't necessarily have a premium finish, like a high-end collectible, but, you know, they did add a couple of extra details to this, um, you know, to, to kind of give it a little bit more value. Uh, for example, there's some scorching here on the rockets, some weathering. So, you know, they didn't have to go to the extra lengths and give us that detail, but, you know, it, it, it makes it look, it makes the ship look a little bit more authentic, you know, to kind of have these burns on the sides of the rocket. Uh, likewise, um, so in, inside this recess here, as you can see, some of these elements are actually gray as opposed to this, like, silver. Yeah, this is something that if you're a modeler, you know, I could see someone just, like, taking great like care and it's actually you know taking um either like with an ink wash or a fine like gundam pen just like carefully tracing out all the panel lines to like really bring out the detail yeah there's so many the tension to detail here is crazy i mean just i was looking at these just now and even the um in the rockets these fans actually spin around that's so cool so in these engines, they actually spin, you know, there's actually, there's actually rotation in, in them. And of course, if you suffer from OCD, it's going to make you crazy because you're going to, you're going to want to make sure that these are completely level with each other. So yeah, really, really nice detail on this. Very impressed. Um, and even though this rocket blaster isn't accurate to the show, it still somewhat retains that Star Wars aesthetic. Um, you know, this looks like a slightly modified version of the, the, the rocket blaster on top of the Millennium Falcon. Albeit only has two barrels as opposed to the four. And then you can put the rockets in here. Um, yeah, there's good, there's good spring to them. So they're spring loaded, um, which I can appreciate. I like a spring loaded rocket 
projectile a lot more than the friction based one with the ball and socket. So these are the blasters that go on the side of the ship. Look really nice. Same mechanism up here. You press the button, spring loaded. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, now the body of the ship, man, it's, it's beautiful. The paint application's amazing here. You know, they kind of have the chip and weathering um, on the side. Now the finish, um, it's kind of that plastic gray that, you know, some people kind of come to expect from like, you know, I mean, you've seen this kind of gray before, like on other Star Wars vehicles and maybe even some Transformer toys. Um, it doesn't have that kind of like luster or like shine that, you know, as appears in the show. But, you know, this is a $40 toy. And I, I can't stress it enough. If you're like a customizer or if you're into model kit building, it's it'd be so easy because all you have to do here is just unscrew it take it apart and you can easily just take your favorite paint to it and just modify it yourself you know give it the kind of finish that you want to give it you know if you want this thing to look like sh super shiny and chrome go go for it if you want it to look a little bit grimy and weathered down um you can do that too but i mean as a stock toy right out of the box i think the finish is appropriate uh especially for the price point you're paying for it you know i can't stress this enough you know the attention to detail the attention to detail here is amazing like the markings on the ship, uh, I'm not 100% sure if they're show accurate, but they look to be, you know, very close. Um, so on the left side, you know, we have the, the stripes and markings with all the chipping and damage and weathering. And on the other side, it's a completely different, um, you know, different situation. It looks like some of the marking has been weathered off. So yeah, a lot of cool attention to detail here. And uh, it's like I said, I, the sculpting here, nice high definition really deep cuts um the panels really stick out there's certain areas that are colored gray to provide for some contrast now one thing that's different with this um version of the ship compared to the one in the show so in the television show the landing gears are arranged differently so i believe the one here in the front is semi-accurate to the show but the rear landing struts um these aren't accurate to the show because if you remember in the show i believe that the landing struts are stored in this compartment here and when they um come down they actually protrude from the side not from the bottom and then they kind of like angle out so it's almost like an additional leg it's almost like a tripod but over here they just have the feet and it's just placed underneath which is okay because there is no mechanism for these things to function and if you're a child if you want to imagine this thing flying you know, you can easily hold it here, and then when you need to land the toy, you don't have to be bothered with actually pulling out panels and removing a landing strut. You know, you can just immediately set it down because the feet are already in place, and they're they're not that obtrusive. They don't stick out too much. So, you know, when you're pretending that it's in flight mode, they're kind of still well hidden away. And they're since, especially since they're very low profile, you know, you don't really notice them too much. Um... Uh, the top of the detailing of the ship, really, really nice. Again, very nice deep cuts, sharp panel lines. Um, you can kind of get a glimpse of the interior of the ship here. All right, so one side of the ship is actually sculpted out. So this side of the ship, the left side of the ship, all the panel lines are sculpted in. Whereas on the right side of the ship, it looks like there's a, a giant sticker, which is unfortunate. Um, but I mean, that's kind of like almost the tradition with toys like these. If you grew up in the 80s, uh, for example, and you had the, the old classic Millennium Falcon, you'll remember the interior of the ship, whereas it had that giant cardboard insert that kind of detailed the interior of the Falcon. Um, likewise, this kind of continues that tradition where, you know, there's no sculpted detail. Instead, we just get a sticker. Which is alright, um, but like I get, like I said before, if you're like a customizer, uh, I can could, I could really see someone have, you know, going nuts and just really detailing this to death. And there's like a piece of chipped paint in my ship. What is that? 
let me grab that real quick. I don't know what this is. Uh, get out, get out. Uh, yeah, this might be a piece of paint or something that flaked off of the ship. I don't know where, but... Okay. All right, so yeah, we have the interior of the ship here. Um, let's open up the other door. All right, so it's nice too with the doors is that they provide these little notches here and here. So you can run your fingernail underneath it and lift it and open it up. And same here, the notch there. Yeah, so keep in mind, remember, this is only a $40 toy. Um, and I want to say, I think the Millennium Falcon might have ran at that price too, the um, Mission Fleet Falcon. Now, the Mission Fleet Falcon, if you don't have that, that's a beautiful toy also. I'll, I have that in my possession. Um, I've never done a review on it, but I, I guess since I'm doing this, maybe in the future I'll do a review on that. That's a great toy. But one thing I'll give this over the Falcon is that the, as cool as the Mission Fleet Falcon was, uh, the interior uh, kind of felt... a teeny bit disappointing like i think you could you were able to remove the back panel and then you had access to like um you know the lounge area with like the the hollow chest table and stuff but i think the spacing there was kind of small and likewise since the vehicle was a bit lower profile you know once you remove the top panel it didn't the height of the walls seemed shorter than the figures whereas this um you know you remove everything on the interior and the figure is still a it's a good good height still you know you actually it actually feels like you know this interior space is meant for this action figure whereas with the falcon it just kind of felt a little like disjointed in the proportions of the back space if that makes any sense now it is kind of disappointing that you know you're just getting this giant sticker over here detailing the um inside of the ship but one thing that's nice about this sticker, though, is that it's actually a matte finish. It's not a glossy sticker. Um, it doesn't feel like the traditional sticker that goes in here either. It has it's, it's a matte finish. It's very smooth. Um, it's nice that it's a matte finish also because it doesn't have that that glare or that like reflective sheen that like a glossy sticker has. And it looks like some of the details from the show are present here. Like they have that mesh net where you keep some of the storage stuff. Um, and the sticker continues even further in, which I can appreciate because it's pretty dark in there. So they didn't need to go to, the, to those extra lengths to give us that extra detail, but they did anyways. And that's, I think, a nice touch. All right, so before we start assembling everything, let's get some of these weapons stored in the weapon locker. So what's also nice with the weapon locker if you look carefully um the impression of the profile of each weapon is kind of like carved into the weapon locker so you can actually see which weapon is supposed to go where so this rifle for example as you can see it's kind of like it's cut out so you can see the shape of it and then you just match it up and you can just put it inside this would probably be a lot easier with <laughs> a child's pair of hands but um, we'll see what we can do with my hands see if this will work all right my biggest fear is always especially with stuff that requires a tab is that I'm always gonna end up breaking the tab at some point so it's got to be a little bit gentle yeah, so my brother, he got this toy also, and he put his together before me. And I think he might have said something about it. Trying to get these weapons in here might have been a little bit difficult, just because it seems like you really need small hands to do this. Um, all right, I got the rifle in there. Okay, it looks like the Stormtrooper Blaster goes on top. And it's nice because they actually cut out a, a, a deeper recess to fit the cartridge. So it'll go in perfectly. Yeah, a lot of care went into this toy. You know, the Mission Fleet stuff is nice. Um, you know, if you're a parent and you're a collector and you're really into Star Wars and if you have kids, 
and they're really into Star Wars. The Mission Fleet stuff is something you know you definitely should be checking out for your children. Um, the playability, I think, is a lot higher than if you just gave them like a Black Series figure, just because the Mission Fleet stuff has vehicles and playsets and stuff. Like this is, I am so stoked on this weapon locker. All right, so if you if you're new to my channel, um, or even if you're old to my channel, actually this is actually the second Razor Crest I've reviewed. Um, if you go back in my catalog of videos, um, I actually reviewed a Razor Crest that I found on eBay. It, it's not licensed. It was unofficial. It was a 3D printed Razor Crest, and the one I bought was apparently a 3D printed model that someone. Um, printed it out themselves and they were attempting to put it together but they did a really piss poor job on it so they just put it up for sale on eBay and I bought it and then when I got it parts of it were broken so I had to re actually restore it and repaint it and I did a lot of work to it I even added lights and I even created a small storage locker for for it uh, but this one's much cooler than mine because it could hold more weapons I think mine only held like two weapons whereas this one holds like a full armament of like six different blasters so yeah this is really cool um god if, if you see this in the stores i can't stress it enough this is a must purchase even if you're not into the mission fleet stuff but you're a big fan of the mandalorian i think this is a great display piece you know it's it'd be something fun to have at your work desk just to like toy around with you know if you have little ones that are into star wars um i would, I would suggest buying two of these one for yourself and uh, one for your kids, because I could I could picture you you know arguing with your ch children over who's gonna play with it next. All right, so yeah, there's the weapons locker fully decked out with all the blasters, and let's get these on. I hope I'm doing this right. I should really consult instructions. Um. Right, it's not going in. All right, snaps into place. snaps into place all right while we're at it let's take a look at the cockpit okay so the detailing here looks very accurate um, we have the three paneled uh, windscreen in the front and then we have the top part of the canopy and then we have the smaller windows towards the middle just like in the show so this opens up um, there's a little tab toward the front. Just put your finger under it and it'll lift up. And wow, there's some beautiful detail on the inside. Let's get close up of that. All right, focus, focus, focus. Oh, come on. All right, there we go. Yeah, so you can see there's some clear, clearing details. We have the two flight sticks on the left and right side unfortunately we don't have that little tiny like ball that Grogu keeps on playing with um kind of curious here it looks like this all right for a second I was gonna see it looks like the seat might actually detach this look I don't want to force it out but if you look here, it looks like the seat is actually tabbed in right there. There's a small little tab. So I don't know if this piece actually is meant to slide out or if it's that's just the way it's assembled. But yeah, look at the detail on the on the flight pad. You know, we have the monitor here, we have the control panels, the two flight sticks here, the gauges. And then uh on the so this is 
is not accurate to the show because I believe in the show there's an additional seat or two, but they're only on one side. Whereas this one has it's almost like pilot seat, like jet pilot seating, where you have the front and then the co-pilot seat in the back. So it, the instruction says if you want to put Grogu in here, um, I'm guessing one reason why they give you this is so that uh, Grogu could like actually be held in place without being jostled around. I think that's yeah. So this fits in pretty snug. And then you can put this guy in here, but he's still going to shift around and move, so... But not as much, because I think if you had this him in there without it, he'd just, like, float around. But once you put the basket in there, it kind of confines his space and makes it a little bit smaller. So he's just going to be situated just in one area. And then we could put Mandalorian in there. Let's take off his cape. Excuse me. All right, so let's get him in there. Oh yeah, real quick, if you've never held one of these figures before, um, they're pretty neat. Uh, they're on a their heads on a ball joint, so it rotates. His arms rotate, and there's actually um, ro you can actually rotate the arm outward also, but it's kind of hindered by a shoulder pad. But there is a joint there, so go go out. Um, there is no waist articulation, and his legs just go up like this. But his wrists do swivel. And since the plastic is very pliable and rubbery, you can actually, you know, adjust it so he's kind of like holding the flight sticks a little bit. And then there we go. I'm going to forget this in focus a little bit better. There. Yeah, it's a really nice clean shot. And then we can close the cockpit down. And then let's get this put into place. So the way this, I believe, assembles is that there's a tab here. And it's notched out towards the bottom here. So I believe you line this in head first. So you're going to come at it with an angle. And then once the tab's in the uh, placed in the correct area, the back will just snap in place just like that and it's held firmly down but if you want to access the top again you go here pull on this and then this pops open and you can remove it so then that grants you accessibility to the inside again so if you want to like you know maneuver your hand and play with the figures go ahead so once again this goes in snaps down Yeah, really, really beautiful ship. Um, the rocket, as instructions stated, you can put the rockets here. You can put it in the middle of the ship. On this side. On this, on the tail end. Or, you know, for the sake of show accuracy, just leave it off altogether. Oh, yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful ship. Um, you know, just looking at it, very impressed. I think, all right, so for $41, um, I do think you're getting a great deal with this. You're getting something that's about 13 inches long. Um, I believe it was, they said it was about 8 inches wide. So it's definitely a large vehicle for a mission fleet. It looks superb. I mean, just check that out. That looks nice. Really, really beautiful ship that we're getting from Hasbro. So yeah, Hasbro, I don't know what it is with the Mission Fleet stuff. Um, I was kind of skeptical when they first announced it a couple years ago. And I remember when I first went into Target and I saw, I think it was the Jedi Starfighters, like Anakin's and Obi-Wan's, and I think Vader's TIE Fighter. You know, I, I thought they looked great. 
it's just one of those things where, you know, I kind of have some of those vehicles already at the three and three quarter scale. And I didn't feel the need to like pull the trigger and start a new collection. But this is different. This is a very unique piece. Um, you know, as I've stated in my other video, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't back the crowdfunded um, HasLab Razor Crest. You know, for one, it's like 350 bucks, and at the time, I just couldn't justify paying for paying for it. Um, I don't know, cause I'm I'm like very impulsive. Like if I pay for something, I want it now. And the idea of like you know, put dropping that kind of money down for something I wouldn't see, you know, for like a year, I couldn't do it. I mean, some people could, you know, more power to you. But for me, I just couldn't do it. And, you know, from what I, I know what's going on right now, I think the Razor Crest has been delayed until February of next year, I think. Um, so my heart goes out to the people that, you know, you know, backed it. And now they just have to wait a little bit longer for it. Um, my brother backed the crowdfunded HasLab Razor Crest. So, you know, I'm fortunate there because at least I could check out his. But you know, for this price point, you know, for forty bucks, you're getting something that's really cool. Um, you know, especially if you don't have the space for that giant thirty-inch Haslab one, which is going to be amazing. You know, for everything I've seen about that that toy and playset, it's going to be amazing. But you know, if you don't have the money or the space for something like that, this is your next best option. You know, it has fun playability to it. It actually has action figures. Um, you know, it's not just like a model kit you could buy at the store and assemble. This is actually like a real toy that that's playable. So it's it's a nice nice piece. And since we're on the subject of Mission Fleet, let's bring out some of the other Mandalorian Mission Fleet stuff. Um, all right, so here's the Blurg that came with Quill. Um, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna see if this guy will fit inside of here. Um, let's remove the roof first. Okay, so right now I can tell you this. The Blurg might be a little bit too big. I don't think it'll fit. All right, let's take Quill out. Yeah, the, the Blurg, it's too wide. Um, his hips are too wide, so he's not going to fit inside of here. All right, I'm a dork. Here's all my... <laughs> Here's all my Mandalorian Mission Fleet stuff. I keep it in one of those like uh, food storage containers that you get like at the restaurants. All right, so here's a bunch of my accessories so I don't lose them. Um, here's a Mandalorian figure. I think it's the one that came with the speeder bike, I think. Um, it looks to be almost the same as the one that comes with this ship. We can compare the two right now. Yeah, the figures I believe are identical. All right, the one thing I did on this figure right here, though, is that I cut a hole out in the cape just so I could tab the jetpack and have the cape on at the same time. Because it's nice, because the jetpack has this huge, giant peg. So, I just kind of, like, cut out a small hole right there. And then, yeah, that look. All right, so here's the speeder bike. Let's see if it'll fit. Awesome. That is awesome. That's a cool play feature. So it's so cool that you keep the speeder bike inside of here. And now if you're a kid, this is or even an adult that plays with toys, <laughs> you're going to love that feature. That's really awesome. Um, here's Grogu's little uh, pram. And it looks like it fits inside of here also. So there's no problem st storing it. And what's even nicer too is I believe there's some extra storage space underneath here. So you might be able to fit it inside. I think. No, it's too wide. It's not going to fit through that door. Um, yeah, it's kind of a tight fit. So I, I wouldn't recommend trying to cram the pram into here because it might get caught and you might not be able to get it out. Um, here's a three and three quarter. Um, I believe this is vintage collection uh, Mandalorian. Just to give you an idea of the size. Um, here's IG-11. 
Cara Dune. And here's the... Is it Hot Wheels or Matchbox that makes these things? I think it's Hot Wheels. This is the Hot Wheels uh, Grogu. And I think I have Boba Fett somewhere in here. Or I did. I'm going to misplace. Oh, here. Here's Boba Fett. Okay, since we're on the subject of vehicles also. All right, so if you're into The Mandalorian, the TV show, you, you'd know that Slave 1 was prominently featured in the show. Okay, so this Slave 1 is not a Mission Fleet vehicle. I repeat, this is not a Mission Fleet vehicle. Uh, this was the Slave 1. It was like the budget Slave 1 that Hasbro produced. Um, I want to say this is around the time when Disney bought out um, Lucasfilm and then... Uh, I think we got all those toys for like Star Wars Rebels and stuff. So they released some like ridiculously downsized vehicles. And one of them was the um, Slave 1. So they gave us a very, very tiny version of the Slave 1. And the funny thing is, is that this was made for the 3 and 3 quarter figures. Um, let me open up the cockpit real quick. All right, so there's the cockpit, and this will hold. So this will hold a three and three quarter figure. Um, this brings into focus. So this was made for like you know three and three quarter Boba Fett, so he'd fit in here like that. But the the cool thing with this vehicle though is that since it's so small, it's almost it's not completely to scale with like a Mission Fleet figure, but. You know, it's an it's a nice like companion piece. So if you have like a Boba Fett and you need a Slave One, even though this is Jango Fett's um, Slave One, um, it's still a cool like substitute until they ever give us you know a Mission Fleet Slave One. You know, you can just put Boba inside like that, close it, and you're good to go. And I'm not sure in terms of like scale accuracy how you know if this is the right size to like the Razor Crest. But, you know, if you're fond of having stuff on display and you need, like, a display for, like, um, you know, if you're creating, like, a Mandalorian display on your shelf and you have the Razor Crest out there and you want a Slave 1, you know, I think this is a great option. This this budget Slave 1 that Hasbro produced some years ago. Um, let me see if they if there's a, a copyright stamp on here so we can see how old this is. Yeah, so this thing's pretty old. This was made back in 2012. So you're looking at a toy that's already like almost 10 years old. So if you could find this, I'd say get it. Um, it's a cool little display piece, especially if you have the Razor Crest. You know, you can display you can display the two side by side, and it'll look awesome. And if you want to go that extra distance, um, you could probably repaint this yourself. I don't remember if Hasbro actually made this version of the Slave One in Boba Fett's colors. But I'm one of those people where I don't really care. You know, it's, it's still Slave 1, and I don't mind the fact that this is Jango Fett's um, color scheme. Okay, so this video is running really long, so I'm going to say an hour. Um, so let's begin to wrap this up. Okay, so like I mentioned before, um, this is the second Razor Crest toy I've reviewed. Uh, if you're new to my channel, or if, even if you're old to my channel, if you haven't watched it yet, and if I remember to, I'll leave a link in the description below. But there was another Razor Crest I reviewed. It was a 3D printed model. Um, I bought it on eBay and the thing was a mess and I kind of had to like fix it up. So if you're curious about more Razor Crest goodness, check that video out. Um, hopefully sometime next year in the future, uh, once my brother gets his HasLab one, maybe I'll do a review on that. But in the meantime, we have this. Um, the Mission Fleet Razor Crest. I got this off of Amazon, forty-one dollars ninety-nine cents, I believe. Uh, that's in the U.S. It's a beautiful, beautiful toy. And as I've stated before, if you're one of those people that backed the Haslab one, you know, congratulations. I'm sure you'll love that toy when it comes out. Um, but this is probably, you know, that might not be. This might not be for you. You know, there's this can't hold a candle to a $350 premium collectible. This is aimed strictly at 
little kids ages four and up. But I think it's worth the value, um, especially if you're a, a fan of The Mandalorian and if you're a collector. It's affordable. Um, it's small. It has a lot of play features. You know, I believe that there's going to be people out there that this is going to be the one thing they buy from the mission fleet. And this will be like a gateway drug. And the next thing you know, they'll you know hunt down all the other vehicles and toys. Because mis the mission fleet stuff, I believe, is like criminally underrated. Um, you know, they have the X-Wing. They have the two Jedi Starfighters. They have the Millennium Falcon. I think they have Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter. The Evaders, I believe. And, you know, hopefully Hasbro will continue on with that toy line because I'm very fond of it. Even though I'm not, like, a deep collector into it, I do pick up pieces here and there. But something like this is, like, yeah, this is, like, awesome. You know, this is going to be the gateway drug, I think, for a lot of people. You know, once they buy this, they're going to get sucked into buying Mission Fleet stuff. All right, so if I had to rate this toy numerically on a scale of 1, do, one through 10, oh, I'm going to say a 10. I think it's perfect. It's perfect for what it is. You know, um, you're buying an affordable toy for a child. It's forty dollars. It's pretty size. It's it's well sized. You know, you're looking at something that's thirteen inches. Um, in terms of the playability, very very high. You know, it has multiple weapons that fire. Uh, the it's and not only is it a, a vehicle, but also doubles as a play set. You know, the play features are, are numerous. They give you the storage locker, you know, dual seated cockpit, you know, the works, you know, it has com some compatibility with like the speeder bike. You can store the speeder bike inside of it. Uh, the sculpting and details top notch. You know, this is nothing to sneeze at. This is, I can't stress it enough. This is awesome. So yeah, if you have like Mandalorian fever and you just need to like buy everything Mandalorian related, you really need a Razor Crest, you know. And I wouldn't settle for like, you know, a tiny small model kit or like, you know, anything like that. You know, you really need something that you want to play with and something that can actually hold. And this is great. This is a fun toy. Um, you know, I would have loved if they released like a larger Razor Crest for like the three and three quarter figures at retail. But, you know, we didn't get that. And I do think that if you're, you know, you did back the crowdfunded one, I think that's going to be a godsend. I think that's going to be probably one of the best Star Wars vehicles we've gotten. Uh, for me, like, I love the big Millennium Falcon. You know, that's, like, one of my favorite Star Wars toys. And I think the Razor Crest is going to, you know, actually surpass that. You know, it looks like it's going to have a ton of play features. The detailing is going to be amazing. And, you know, you get so many cool things with it. So, you know, really looking forward to that next year. Um, but in the meantime, you know, give this a shot. You know, if you see this in the stores, you know, just check it out. I think it's worth the money. Um, I don't think you're going you're gonna to regret it. Like, I'm gushing over this. I think this thing is amazing. So, with that being said, um, once again, my name is Lou. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Um, and as if you notice, I have a tendency just to, like, ramble on for, like, you know, hours on end. Um, but this is a fun thing I enjoy doing, and I enjoy sharing my passion of toys with other people. So, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning uh, subscriber or viewer, you know, thank you for all your support and comments. You know, I greatly appreciate it. Um, I've only been doing this since, you know, I've had a YouTube channel forever, but in terms of doing the toy stuff, I've been doing this since this March or like February. So I'm still kind of new to this, although I have like, I think almost like 200 videos. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah, so go out there, um, buy some toys, and I'll see you um, with the next video. Right, talk to you later.